Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Big Daddy Unlimited. Here today we're going to talk about body armor. Uh, body armor is one of those things that can be very confusing and almost mystical, and it doesn't need to be. It's actually fairly straightforward once you understand the terms and the definitions and things like that. So to start out, uh, your two basic types of body armor are going to be soft armor panels and hard armor panels. And so I've got a soft one here, and as the name suggests, it is soft. It's more flexible, much lighter in weight. And then I've got hard panels, which are what these are, and obviously these are uh, heavier, they're solid, they're more rigid. And that's just the basic difference there. So it's self-explanatory, hard versus soft. Now when we talk about the uh, level of protection provided by these various things, we get into what's called an NIJ standard, the National Institute of Justice standard. And that changes from, uh, from um, time to time as they upgrade the standards and whatnot with different types of ammunition. First thing to understand is if a piece of armor has an NIJ rating, it is rated at that. And it's not necessarily that and everything below it. Um, as a practical matter, it probably is, but technically speaking, because the NIJ standards, in order to certify a piece of armor to a certain standard, they're very expensive. So they'll only do uh, standard testing for that one level. So they're not necessarily warranting that it's gonna be good for, if it's good for rifle, it may not be good for handgun. They're not saying that. Chances are it will be, and, and generally we accept that rifle plates will protect you from rifle stuff all the way down, and so on and so forth. But just understand that, that um, when there's a, a, like a level four rating, it's tested for level four for those specific criteria, okay? So, uh, in your soft armor, you're gonna start out with, you've got level 2A, level two, and then level 3A. And those are your general three levels of soft body armor. Uh, for a patrol officer, a uniformed police officer, level two or level 2A or what you're typically gonna see. For like a SWAT officer, someone that's, that's doing uh, entries and whatnot, you may see a level 3A in a soft panel. When you go into level three and above, now you're getting into typically hard plates and that's your rifle level protection. The soft stuff is for the most part handgun protection. The hard plates will start getting into the area of rifle protection. And so you have level three and level four, and those are the two uh, technical uh, levels there. You also will sometimes see a level three plus with a special threat rating. And some manufacturers will make something, the plates that I've got in my, uh, my training carrier here are a composite ceramic uh, composite mix and they're level three plus special threat rated. So that's something that some of the manufacturers come up with. But um, your level three uh, is, that's what this one is right here. This is a level three composite plate. And this one is a level three steel plate. So when we talk about the different materials in our hard plates, uh, there are different uh, materials that go into the, um, the soft, uh, soft panels as well. Generally, um, Kevlar is what we, we normally refer to, and that is one of, still one of the most common. There are some more higher tech uh, materials that are out there from different manufacturers. But uh, particularly, you'll be making selections in the hard plates between the different materials. So like I said, you've got steel is one of your possibilities, the composite, and then ceramic or a ceramic composite mix. And those are kind of the three that you're normally gonna see. When you're looking at your hard plates, uh, there, are, there are three criteria. You're gonna have your thickness, your weight, and your cost. And generally you can pick two. So if you want thin and light, it's gonna cost you more money. If you want uh, thin and cheap, then you're gonna be looking at something like the steel, which is gonna weigh a lot more. So of those three cr criteria, you can normally get two um, with, your, with your choice. Uh, the f uh, last thing to think about with your plates, you'll notice that sometimes they'll be specified as a standalone or as an in conjunction. A standalone plate, as the name suggests, is capable of standing by itself in your plate carrier, and it gives you that, whatever the rating is, uh, that level of protection. An in-conjunction plate is meant to be worn in conjunction with a soft backer, usually a level 3A backer, that uh, combined with the two, two together, will give you whatever the specified level is. Um, generally speaking, even with standalone plates, I try to run soft body armor behind them because they will give you more uh, shock absorption when the round does hit you. 
and we'll talk about that in a second. So, like I said, we have our soft body armor, which is the concealable stuff generally that you'll see a police officer wearing. We have our hard armor, which is going to be a little bit heavier, more rigid, and this is where we get into our rifle threats. And it's important that uh, you go through and do your research because there are a lot of different companies out there, uh, some reputable, some not, and make sure that you're getting what you're going to need. We're going to talk about specific applications in a little bit, but make sure you're getting what you need for your purpose. Uh, if we're looking at using this as an actual, um, in a real world situation, get the best armor that you can afford. Do not scrimp on your armor. Get the best armor that you can afford for the most likely threat that you think you might come up against. Uh, and reality has to intrude. So that's why most police officers, even though the soft body armor doesn't give us rifle threats, we can wear it underneath the uniform blouse and uh, it's concealable, it's, it's, it's discreet, it's lighter. And so that's just the choice that we make uh, based on the reality of the situation. And then when we know we're going to go into something a bit more dangerous, that's when the hard plates might come out and the carrier, the uh, overcarrier and whatnot. So last thing to talk about with this, and I, I already mentioned it briefly, is uh, the idea of uh, absorbing that energy. So we have a couple of considerations. If you do get shot on your armor, first of all is penetration, worried about the round actually penetrating and going into your body, which is obviously bad. There's also a consideration of that energy transfer as well and dissipating that energy so that uh, you don't get the blunt force trauma, uh, even if it doesn't actually penetrate into your body. And that's where having the soft armor behind it um, can be beneficial. There's also a consideration of something called spalling, and that's when the round, especially on the steel plates, the round hits and fragments, and now you've got fragments coming up maybe into your face or something along those lines. And so um, you can get, going back to the steel plate, you can get a coating that's added to the plate that will help minimize that effect a little bit. So energy transfer and spalling are some other things to think about. Okay. So that gets us through the technology itself, talking about the armor, what the different levels mean, uh, some of the coding considerations and things of that nature. Now, throughout my career, I was an end user of body armor and uh, was never particularly, I'm not one of the armor guys that knows all the different details. This is not my, my, my area of uh, where I've gotten into the weeds. Not like with my guns where that was more of my thing and I can talk about all the details and so on and so forth. When I went to get my armor, and like I said, this is my current carrier right here. These are level three plus special threat plates and they're a uh, ceramic composite mix. I went out, I did my research, looked at a couple of companies, talked to some friends in the industry and uh, got the best plate that I could afford that gave me the level of protection that I wanted based on the threat that uh, the threat matrix that I was likely to encounter. And I did use this a bit towards the end of my career uh, for entries. Mostly it's been a training carrier and, uh, and uh, in running shoot house classes, teaching shoot house classes, and participating in shoot house classes, that kind of thing. So, all right, so now that we've covered the armor itself, let's move into some considerations for its use. And I've already talked briefly about the idea that get what you need. Um, it's not about getting the, the heaviest or the thickest or the, 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 the highest rated protection. It depends on what you're going to be using, what you're going to be needing. So um, don't get carried away. Take a hard look, an objective look at what you're going to need and make your, your decisions accordingly. When we're starting to use this stuff, the biggest mistake that I see people make is they wear it too low on their chest. And so when we go to position this plate, it's kind of like thigh rigs. When we get them out of the package, a lot of times they're too low because that's just how they come uh, from the factory. And people keep them there because they don't know what they don't know. They don't know that it should be higher. Same thing when we're talking about our plate. A lot of times the, out of the, uh, the box, the plate carrier is adjusted so that the plate rides much lower on the torso. And this is a mistake. What we're trying to do with this plate is get it high up on the thoracic chest so that we provide protection for our lungs, our heart, spinal column, all that good stuff that we don't want to get injured. So you want to make sure that the plate does come up nice and high on the chest. And different plates will have different cuts up here because sometimes this will bounce off your chin um, and it'll, it'll hinder your movement a little bit. So that's some, another feature you can look at. Uh, they have shooter cuts that are angled off here because 
My old partner was a, a former power lifter, and uh, he would have a hard time with a full profile plate of getting his arms together because his chest and biceps would literally bind on the plate. So those are considerations, um, making sure that you can move with the plate. And that gets us into the biggest point that I make, and I used to harp on my guys about this a lot back on the task force. Um, we were doing high-risk fugitive apprehension. We were going in against uh, bad guys that didn't want to go back to jail. And it was easy to go down the rabbit hole of armor and think, well, I want as much protection as I can possibly get. Understand that with armor, there's a sliding scale between coverage and protection and mobility on the other side. And the big consideration is that armor does not stop gunfights. Shooting the bad guy stops gunfights. Armor gives us time and protection so that we can do that. We can have that positive ballistic effect on our bad guy. But armor by itself doesn't uh, do anything for us other than provide us that protection. If we just stand there taking rounds, eventually something's going to find its way in and we're going to get hurt. So armor in and of itself does not stop the gunfight. So you want to bear that in mind and not wrap yourself in so much that you lose the ability to fight effectively. Um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit in a second when we talk about plate carriers as well. But you'll see that um, with like SWAT officers, it's not uncommon that they get a full armor package that includes shoulder protectors, a groin piece, uh, maybe shoulder, uh, not just shoulder covers down here, but also coverage up here uh, on the top. The cummerbund itself is going to have armor. And like in this case, this is, as I said, this is the one that I normally use for training. Right now it's set up in its minimalist format with uh, just elastic uh, sides for the cummerbund that goes around my torso. I also have these pieces that I can retrofit and these have level 3A armor placed inside the cummerbund. So if for some reason I feel that I need that, then I can put these on and now I'll have a little bit more protection around the sides as well because the sides are a vulnerability. My old uh, entry armor had armor in the sides and in the shoulders, again, based on the nature of what I was doing. We didn't want to, uh, to be exposed to a, a, a flanking maneuver or, or someone from a crowd after we made an arrest might start shooting at us and might catch us on, a, on the oblique or something. But um, you can put so much on that you, you've uh, significantly limited your ability to move and therefore to fight. So that's just something that, that I want you to keep in mind. Again, Try to be objective and look at what you need and get what you need. So now let's talk about carriers briefly. So we've got a bunch of different carriers up here. Um, this is another one that I have used. This is one of my more minimalist types. And so you're generally gonna find that you've got the, the two types. You have a minimalist type, which is going to provide front and rear coverage. And that's about it. Um, there's nothing in the shoulders here, nothing on the sides in the cummerbund. And then you might get something like this that is a more scalable system um, that allows you to have something on the sides. Or, uh, as I said with my old duty armor, a full system that gives you shoulder protection, side protection, uh, maybe a bit more coverage up in the sides. Depending on the, if you have soft body backers, you can get uh, soft body backers where the wings, because these are sized for the individual, all of these uh, plates, um, they come in different sizes and do your research, make sure that you're getting one that's gonna be appropriate for your body size. The soft body panels tend to be a bit more custom for the individual and you can get good overlap on the sides that uh, even with your plate carrier underneath will give you some good side protection. As I've said repeatedly, when you're looking at your, uh, your carrier, again, it's important to decide what do I need this for? So if um, I'm going to be doing something where more coverage might be warranted, then go with a more full featured system. If you're going to be using it as a home defense uh, piece of equipment or for a training type circumstance, then maybe something that is more minimalist might be more appropriate. Again, be objective in what you're doing. Really define your mission. In previous videos, you've heard me talk about that. When we're picking our equipment and whatnot, it's critical that we define the mission to make sure that the equipment satisfies that mission. Don't go pick the equipment and then try to make the mission fit it, which you know, is unfortunately something that we do frequently. One more thing talking about these. Both of these systems uh, incorporate what's called a placard system, which is something that I've been a big fan of. And what this basically is, is on the front here, you have a removable 
Velcro lined placard that can come on and off depending on the mission that you're trying to accomplish. So I've got uh, in my, my travel box, uh, when I used to go up and, and do the shoot house classes, I've got several placards in there. This one is set up for carbine. So they all have a tourniquet on the front that I can access with either hand. And then uh, in this case, there are two rifle magazines and a pistol magazine. I've also got one that's set up just when I'm running pistol. So it only has pistol magazines. I've got one set up for when I'm running shotgun and it's got uh, uh, Velcro spots for my Velcro shotgun cards that I can put additional cards there. Um, this particular one has got uh, another one of the, the placards that I have is just a big dump pouch. So if I'm not really doing anything loading from my chest, maybe I'm just working off my, my belt with my handgun, then I can, uh, I can just put that on there and it's just a place to keep additional stuff. So that gives you a lot of versatility. The more conventional system, and both of these are actually set up for placards as well, we've kind of gone that way with the industry because it does give you a lot of adaptability depending on what you're doing rather than having to, uh, to take placards off and, and, or take uh, uh, pouches off and reweave the molly and so on and so forth. This gives you something that you can do fairly expediently, fairly quickly um, on the fly. So the final thing we're gonna talk about is applications. Uh, if you're not law enforcement, if you're not military, why would I need something like this? And there are two that, and I already mentioned them, that I think are the most appropriate for your ordinary citizen. One is gonna be for a home defense type situation. So consider that if you do ever hear that bump in the night and you feel the need to get your home defense firearm and sally forth to see what's going on, you're probably, most people are just gonna have the gun and the ammunition that's on board. You're not gonna have anything else with you. If you've got something like this set up um, next to the bed or in the corner or whatever, you've now got the ability to quickly throw something on, no matter what you've got on, uh, pajamas or fuzzy slippers or whatever you're wearing at the time, and uh, you've now got a piece of equipment that's quickly uh, donable that's gonna have whatever you choose to put on there. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But for example, you may have your spare ammunition for your handgun, a cell phone, a flashlight, your medical kit. A bunch of different things can now be on here and you're equipped for whatever your situation may be. Now, you, know, you probably won't need it, but it's better to have it, not need it, than need it, and not have it. Another, um, appropriate application for just an ordinary person might be as a training rig. So you're gonna be going and doing classes, carbine classes, shotgun classes, even handgun classes in certain circumstances, or vehicle classes, or uh, the shoot house classes that I've talked about. In those cases, having something like this, it's a convenient way to keep your equipment organized, uh, spare magazines, your med kit, maybe some tools, uh, maybe a bottle of water, whatever the case may be, it's all with you. It does give you the armor protection as well. And um, you might decide that that's something that's appropriate. Again, consider what you're gonna be doing with it and make sure that it's relevant to that task. When you're setting your things up though, I will give you a moment of caution or a, a word of caution rather, don't overload your plate carrier. And this is something else that I've seen both uh, operationally and also in training circles. People will show up, with just all kinds of stuff mounted on their plate carrier. Uh, and and to, to a degree as well, also on their battle belt or wherever. And we have a tendency to load up with the greatest whiz bang pouch and well, I might need this and I might need this. Be very critical and very careful when you're adding stuff on here for a couple of reasons. One, the more you add on here, the heavier this is gonna be. Uh, the heavier it is, the less mobile you're gonna be. The more, the bulkier it is, the less mobility you're gonna have. And you can have things start to sneak in, and I'll give you a really good example. Years ago, I was training with a buddy of mine, one of my contemporaries, and uh, we were doing handgun, and we were, weren't running an armor, we were slick. And uh, as I was drawing my pistol, I kept bringing the gun out and around. And I had nothing, nothing, uh, no armor on or anything, no, no uh, pouches or anything. And so he stopped me at one point and he goes, why are you doing that? Because that's technically not correct. It's not a linear motion, it's not efficient. Why are you bringing your hand around in that arc? And I said, uh, I don't know. Um, I wasn't aware that I was doing that. And it concerned me because it was incorrect. It was not the most efficient way for me to present my handgun. So I went home and I thought about it because I was, I was bothered that this bad habit had somehow snuck into my practice. 
And because uh, as you, you've heard me say, it's not practice makes perfect. Practice makes permanent. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Well, this was an example of where some bad practice had snuck in to my regimen. So uh, I started looking at things, trying to figure out what had caused this. And what had happened was I'd gotten the new pouch, and I'd put it on my armor, and it was blocking access to my pistol. So when I drew my pistol, I was having to come around this pouch. And I forget now what the pouch even had in it. It was something, an admin pouch or something, I don't know. But uh, upon realizing that it was causing this negative practice, um, I yanked it off and uh, it gave me a valuable lesson. And from that point going forward, I was very specific when I put anything on my armor to make sure that it did not act or I did not hinder access to my sidearm, my med kit, the important stuff that I had to get to. I couldn't have that buried down somewhere where I wasn't going to be able to get to it. Again, that defeats the purpose. We're so well protected with our armor, but we can't get to our life-saving tools. So be very mindful as you put equipment on here, only put on what you need. Uh, there's a temptation to put different tools and this and that and the other thing. Don't. Leave that back in the range bag. You can go back and get that if you need it. Only put on the armor what you're going to need, what the mission calls for, what the circumstances dictate. So we are going to be uh, selling um, some of these different things out here. There'll be a link in one of the pinned comments below. Uh, the plate carriers will be coming online, uh, not right away, in a, a couple of months probably. As always, give us a like and uh, subscribe. If you have any questions at all, put them down below and stay safe.